Hey, this is Doug Hall doing a real estate minute or so. Wanted to talk a little bit about the state of the market. Um, current state of the market, sellers. Volume is down. The number of transactions that are happening is lower now than it was last year by about 30 to 40%. Uh, I looked at statistics recently for June, July and August sales. And yeah, in my zip code, there were 75 sales in July of 2021. And now it's about 43 sales in 2022. So numbers are down. Um, there are no more bidding wars happening, no more escalations, um, rarely multiple contracts occurring. So, um, you know, if you're putting your house in the market, uh, you would expect to get your asking price or maybe a little bit less. A year ago, you might have expected to get your asking price or a little bit more or even a lot more. We had a lot of crazy bidding wars in the last couple of years, but that seems to have cooled off. Um, prices have not dropped by any measurable amount. Um, uh, prices are, are stable and uh, the sellers are negotiating, uh, but there is no $100,000, there is nobody getting $100,000 off of a house right now. Um, um, sellers tend to be holding firm on their prices, um, but they are offering things like closing costs. You might get a, a little bit of a price reduction and some closing costs. Uh, you definitely will get a home inspection through, an appraisal through, um, things that we weren't able to do in the years past because it was so competitive. Now, um, you know, if you're trying to sell your house, you, you, you would expect that the buyer is going to do a home inspection, that you're probably going to give them a little credit towards closing, and maybe a little discount on the price. And even during the home inspection, uh, maybe negotiate some repairs um, in the form of credits or doing some work to the house. Uh, but these things don't last forever. Uh, and so if you're a seller and you say, you're saying to yourself, oh, the market is, is, is slowing down or it's crashing or, oh, my God, I should have sold my house last year. Don't worry. Um, this is just a, a temporary adjustment. We've had lots of temporary, 20 years of doing this. I've experienced so many temporary adjustments that I'm, I'm immune to it at this point. So right now we're, we're looking at, um, you know, uh, maybe a couple months at most where things are things are are going to be slow uh buyers <coughs> interestingly buyers uh interest interest rates are in the six percent range and that is a shock to the system for people who have been accustomed to seeing p interest rates at or below four percent i've got clients that actually have houses that they refinance down to like two and a half percent well those days are done rates are now back up in in, in the sixes which is kind of where they naturally should be. Uh, rates down at four or below, that's that's the Fed um, having zero short-term borrowing. Um, uh, you know, th There's no cost in the short-term borrowing between banks. And so when you're at 6%, the Fed is actually charging some money for, for short-term borrowing between banks. And that translates into the interest rates being at sort of this natural place. Um, the cost of home ownership is high. We are coming off of a spike in the market, probably 20% in the last two years that real estate values went up. Um, but, um, you know, w what you do when you buy a house, if you're a buyer is you're, you're going to marry the house and you're going to date the rate. And that would be make a long-term commitment on the house. Find the one, the one that you like, buy it, move into it and forget about it. Don't, don't keep looking at what you paid for it. Um, the interest rate though will come down and you can refinance it. So you may have to commit to a 6% interest rate or something in that range today to buy a house today, but a year from now, you might be looking at 55 or 4% being able to refinance down to a lower rate. So really the interest rate is, is kind of a short-term commitment if you wanna look at it that way. And most people do. I have clients that refinance their house you know, that have been houses, in houses for 20 years and have refinanced those houses four or five times. You just, if the rate is cheaper and you don't care about the long-term payoff um, you just want the monthly uh, payment to be more reasonable and refinance. It's an option. Um, sellers will negotiate with you now. I know that I said that in the seller portion of this conversation, but now I'm going to say it in the buyer's portion of the conversation. Um, sellers will negotiate with you. Sellers will give you a seller concession. So if you're limited with cash to make a purchase, uh, and you can't afford to pay your closing costs, for instance, likely the seller on the house you choose will give you a concession to cover your closing costs. So all you're coming with is your down payment. Uh, but I would not expect uh, any seller to give you $100,000 off the price of the house. 
So the, the fact that the market has turned down or is cool doesn't mean that, that it is now a complete buyer's market and buyers can you know, go for the throat. Uh, it's, it's still sellers are holding firm on their prices uh, and buyers should expect to come in and make an offer below the asking price and negotiate to something within reason of the asking price. Um, so massive discounts, it's not happening right now. Um, at least I'm not seeing it. Um, there is a lot more inventory to see now than there was a year ago. A year ago, you would have been out looking at one house. Um, and now, now if you've got a, a range, a neighborhood that you want to be in, there's lots of options to look at. Lots of houses that have sat for a while and, and lots of, you know, uh, motivated sellers that might negotiate with you. So it's a good time to go looking at real estate uh, because, you know, it's not competitive like it used to be. So you have, you have time. Um, you know, there's, you don't have to be as urgent to make a bid on a house before somebody else does. Uh, and you can make your deal. And boy, that's a, that's a great feeling. Um, if you've been shopping for houses in the past several years, you had to, you had to make a snap decision. You had to move fast. You had to, to spend more and you had to, to suck it up and, and do what it took to win. Well, now it's not quite that bad. Uh, now you can make your, your deal based on your own terms. Um, and, you can end up with a pretty fair, fair deal on a house. And again, I said this before in the seller section of this conversation, I'm going to say it in the buyer section. Uh, these things don't last forever. These things don't last forever. Right now, there is a window of time where you can go out and buy a house and negotiate. You can make your deal. Yeah, you might end up with a slightly higher interest rate than, than in years past, but that can change down the line. Um, so if you're thinking about buying a house, I would not sit on the sideline for too long because these things don't last forever. So let's talk about mortgage. Um, the one thing that I think has most buyers held up and has the market somewhat stalled is the high sales price of house rates, houses right now. Um, but mortgage rates in the 6% range. Most people have a, a, a mental history about 10 years back, right? So we all know people that have interest rates in the two, three, four percent range. We all know people that, that we, we probably have them ourselves. And our, when we think back, it's, it, it's a long time back in your mind before you can find uh, a time where rates were six percent or above. It was like 2007, 2008 in that time frame, almost 15 years ago. So our short term memory um, shows, shows us that interest rates are in that you know, three, four, five percent range and six percent just sounds bad. And it does. It sounds bad to me, too. You know, I've got a three percent rate on my house. So uh, one thing that is available out there to buyers, and this is I'm, I'm going to say this to, to anybody that's looking to buy out there. But also, if you're a real estate agent, and you're watching this. Take notes. Um, embrace home loans. This is a mortgage company. Uh, there's a, there's an office in Fairfax here. Embrace home loans has an in-house loan product called Prime Plus. Uh, and so the Prime Plus is a, is a, it's basically a loan program where there's no adders. They don't add on to the rate for credit score. They don't add on for it being a condo that you're buying. They don't add on for lower down payment, things like that. So what you end up with is, and I'll, I'll tell you this, my wife works for Embrace. So uh, uh, we've actually run several scenarios. A traditional conventional loan uh, that might price out at, let's say, six and a quarter interest rate. Um, we'll price out on this Prime Plus program at close, some, somewhere in the neighborhood of five, maybe even 4.875. And we've run several scenarios um, with clients recently where they were a conventional loan at six and a quarter and Prime Plus was 4.875 in that range, 30-year uh, um, fixed, with I think a minimum of 10% down. It was either 10 or 15% down payment, but um, it's a significant, it's a significant difference between con traditional conventional loans and this Prime Plus program. I mean, literally Prime Plus is a point, a one percentage point below market rates. So um, if, you've, if you've got, if you're a real estate agent, you've got clients that are on the fence because rates went too high, they need to look at this program. Um, Everybody qualifies. I believe you have to have a minimum 700 credit score. 
um, and you have to be making a down payment. So the zero down buyer, they won't, they won't qualify. But other than that, there's no, there's no tricks. There's no, there's no catch. It's easy to qualify for. So uh, I'm going to give you Valerie's contact info. Um, if you're interested in talking about this loan program, call Valerie at 703-309-2005. 703-309-2005, Valerie Hall, Embrace Home Loans. You can also text her on that number. She'll re reply to you immediately if you text her. Okay, the future. What does the future have to hold? So remember I said, these things don't last forever. They don't last forever. Um, I'm gonna give you my opinion. There are different analysts out there that will say, oh, no, 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 that's not what's gonna happen. Here's what's gonna happen. Or that's Whatever. Here's what I think is going to happen. And this, this is based on 20 years of doing this. Uh, we are going to be in a crawl until December. I think the market is going to be slow. The buyer is going to remain on the fence until December. Um, you're going to see sellers kind of in a panic trying to sell their houses or giving up and taking their houses off the market uh, because they don't sell. Um, so we will glide till then. And then in January, you will have kind of a spring market push. And what happens is typically uh, buyers and sellers have conversations over Christmas and Thanksgiving. Hey, we're going to sell our house next year. What, what, what should we do? And they have the conversation and they reach out to their real estate agents and, and start planning for selling their houses. Uh, and that we typically start getting phone calls over Christmas, the Christmas holiday and going into January uh, for the spring market. It happens every year in a good or a bad market. Uh, the market has a surge that, that starts around January and it'll happen again this year. No question. It's going to happen. Um, there will be a potentially another Fed funds interest rate increase. I don't know how much of that's going to be. I hope, 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 hope that they just leave it alone and don't do anything. Um, but, you know, they're trying to slow inflation and this is their method to do that. So don't be surprised if the rates go up even higher. Um, it will likely be a competitive spring market, regardless of Fed funds rate increase. It will likely be competitive. Um, people can't sit and wait forever to buy or sell their houses. They have to do business. Um, and so you will see a flow of transactions that will begin sometime in, in January, and it'll flow all the way through spring like it always does, and then it'll cool off at the end, end of July. Um, prices will probably drop a little between now and December. I wouldn't say anything significant, but prices will cool. Uh, and then going into January, February, March, you will see an, an increase in sales price. People will, will go back up on sales price and there'll be more buyers out shopping and the prices will creep back up again. So again, uh, I've said this before, these things don't last forever. Um, if you are looking to sell your house, um, e either you do it now or you wait until the spring. Um, uh, either way, likely you're going to see the, your, your real estate values uh, decline slightly between now and December, and then they'll creep back up by spring. So whatever you can sell for today is probably the same number you can sell for in the spring. Uh, if you're a buyer, uh, you, yes, the interest rates are in six, at the 6% rate. Uh, yes, you can get a cheaper rate going prime plus with Embrace. Uh, but if you're a buyer, um, your ability to negotiate the deal is important. Um, you know, you want to be able to do a home inspection. You want to get a closing cost concession. You want to settle it in on your terms. You don't want to beg to, to be able to buy the house. So your opportunity is now if you're the buyer. Um, and, you know, I would not wait and, and hope that it's going to be better for the buyer in the spring because, because historically it isn't. Um, things tick back up in the spring market. And it'll be competitive again. We'll probably see escalation addendums and multiple offer situations on the on the really good houses. And the buyers will that haven't didn't take advantage of the quiet market in the fall will lose out in the spring. So um, recommendation for buyers would be take action now. Don't wait till then. Uh, anyways, so that is my let's see my market minute. It actually was a market 15 minutes. So uh, if you have any questions or you want to just talk I like talking real estate. Uh, reach out to me. My number is 703-220-7599. Uh, if you want to talk a little bit more about, about that Prime Plus mortgage pro program, uh, reach out to my wife, Valerie Hall. Her number is 703-309-2005. You can text us both. Have a great day, folks. See you soon.